Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Pennington County Planning Commission, November 27th, 2023 meeting. Recommendations of the Planning Commission on certain items from this agenda will be considered by the Board of Commissioners at their regular meeting on December 5th, 2023 at 10.30 a.m. I usually tell you 10.30 a.m. is when they address the planning items. The Planning Commission utilizes speaker request forms which are available in the Commission chambers in the back during the meeting. If you are an applicant, you don't need to fill one out. First thing is roll call. Everyone's here today, Jerry. Everyone have a chance to review the minutes of the November 13, 2023 meeting of the Planning Commission in their packet. If so, the chair would address a motion to approve those minutes. Move approval. Second. Second. Been moved and seconded to approve the November 13, 2023 minutes of the Pennington County Planning Commission. Discussion. Hearing none, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. <clears throat> the agenda. Did everyone also get a chance to review their agenda in our packet today? Chair would address a motion to approve that agenda. Move to approve. Second. Been moved and seconded to approve the agenda for the November 27, 2023 meeting of the Planning Commission. Discussion. Hearing none, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. On to the consent agenda. Good morning, Brittany. Good morning, Commissioners. Brittany Molitor, Planning Director. The following items have been placed on the consent agenda for action to be taken on all items in accordance with staff's recommendation by single vote. Any item may be removed from the consent agenda by any Planning Commissioner, staff member, or audience member for separate consideration. The findings of this Planning Commission on certain items from the agenda are recommendations to the Pennington County Board of Commissioners who will make the final decision. Item number three is Conditional Use Permit Review CUR 98, or excuse me, 0847 for Roger Stockstead to review a single wide manufactured home as a permanent residence in a suburban residential district. And staff recommends to end conditional use permit review <coughs> CUR 0847 as the use is no longer needed. Item number four is conditional use permit review CUR 2112 for Kent Prismas to review a camper to be used as temporary living quarters while working on the property and building a cabin during the spring, summer, and fall up to 180 calendar days per year in the suburban residential district. And staff recommends to end conditional use permit review CUR 2112 with the applicant's concurrence. And finally, item five is Minor Plan Unit Development Amendment Review PUR 2215 for Daryl Bren to allow an accessory structure as a primary structure. And staff recommends to end Minor Plan Unit Development Amendment Review PUR 2215 as the use is no longer needed. Thank you, Brittany. Is, uh, is that, uh, does anyone have any clerical items? I do on number four, the date was mistyped on page three of three and item four, the analysis, November 16th, I'm sure it's 2023 rather than 22. <clears throat> Any polls from the staff, from the audience? Anyone like to have any one of those three polled? The commission. Hearing that we would vote. Let's move to approve consent agenda. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda as uh, listed in our uh, agenda today. Any discussion from the audience, from the commission? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. On to item number six. No, yeah, six. Commissioners, Christine Phillip, Assistant Planner. Agenda item number six, conditional use permit CU 2336. 
The applicant owners are Daniel and Gretchen Tybalt. The location is 323552 Boulder Hill Road. The lot size is 78.08 acres. There's no flood hazard on the property. The interdepartmental review had no major concerns or comments. Analysis. The staff performed a site visit on November 16th. The applicant intends to build a primary residence and keep the existing residence in the pole barn as a guest house. The primary dwelling shall be classified as owner-occupied and proof of the status must be provided. The applicant has been provided with the information for the owner-occupied. Staff has received no complaints regarding the applicant's requested use. And staff recommends approval of conditional use permit 2336 with conditions. Um, and the applicant is here if you have any questions for him. Thank you. Questions for Christine. Number five, Old Hill City Road. The only reason I know that is I live on Old Hill City Road. Right? Thank you. Away, just doesn't jive. No, that's fine. That's all I have. Okay. I had one question. Now, do these require single utilities, you know, or how do we look at those, Christine? Um, they actually are supposed to be with the same utilities as the house. He already has septic separate for each place. So then what you do is you basically record that in your planning. Mm -hmm. Uh, proposals. Correct. Okay. And um, we have the plans from the septic when they were put in. So. Okay. Understood. Thank you. Any other questions for Christine? Any questions for the applicant? Chair to address a motion. So move. Second. Moved and second to approve conditional use permit 23-36 with uh, 10 conditions. Discussion from the audience, from the commission. Hearing none, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> motion carried on to item number seven. Megan Talmadge Planner. Agenda item number seven is Preliminary plan PL 23-24 is to reconfigure lot lines in order to create tract A revised and tract B revised of Alma subdivision. The applicant and owner is Marjorie Helgeson and her agent is Davis Engineering. Um, this is located off of Burgess Road. Um, it is currently agriculture and rural residential district and there is 100 year flood hazard on the property. Um, the layout plan on from this preliminary plan requested that the applicant get a variance, a subdivision regulation variance to not improve the road to ordinance 14 standards and the applicant obtained that on May 2nd, 2023. And they also obtained a rezone um, on March 13th, 2023 for the small portion being um, uh, being added into lot three or the new tract B revised. Um, tract A will still need an operating license before um, the middle of the final plat. And there was a minor comment from Register of Deeds to correct the easement reference on the um, on the plat. Other than that, staff found no significant issues with this request and uh, would recommend approval on this item. Thank you. Questions for Megan? <coughs> Megan, I've just got two. I'd like to add an additional condition on number seven uh, or put it in where you, you feel comfortable putting it in. Um, I noticed just two uh, for lack of a better term, because I, I don't have any problem supporting this preliminary plan, but to move it along, I did have two questions on um, the drawings when you compare the two drawings. One, and so we could put it in one um, condition. Um, would the uh, surveyor address the uh, uh, the location of the lot line for number one? 
dash two uh, on the road, it shows in one drawing that it's in the center of the road, the other one it shows on the outside edge, and I'm not sure the same people own those lots. So we should address that. And then my second question would be to address the location of the pin. And this again may be the difference between satellite or whatever you call it, sizing of the drawing. But the, the pin on the 15 uh, shows that it's on the section line. And when we look at the drawing for 2023, it's considerably off the section line. So if you would address those somewhere along the line, the surveyor. Yes, the agent isn't here today, but I will send him an email and let him know of those discrepancies or of those differences um, before the uh, Board of Commissioners meeting next week. Okay. If any one of the commissioners speak up, if you disagree with that, but I'd rather move it along and get it done. But those two, uh, the, the locations from the, in the drawings are, are considerably different. Okay. Any other discussion on it from the audience? Okay. Megan, is there any change at all in that government lot six that stays the same? The government lot six, this small triangle that's going into tract A revised was originally part of that government lot six, and that will now be part of that tract A. So the other part, the other government six now is clear up that big one up above that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. <clears throat> Any other questions or discussions on this? Chair would address a motion. Move to approve preliminary plan 23-24. Second. It moved and seconded to approve preliminary plan 23-24 with seven conditions. <coughs> Discussion from the audience. From the commission. Hearing none, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, Megan. Mr. Chair, I make a motion that we combine agenda items number eight and nine for the purposes of discussion, but vote on them separately. Second. It's moved and seconded to discuss items number eight and nine in our agenda. As one, uh, for purposes of discussion, it will should be noted this motion would have to pass uh, with a two-thirds majority and as well that we can will have to vote on each item as an individual basis. That having understood discussion, hearing none, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Megan, you're allowed to discuss them together. All right, thank you. Um, agenda item number eight and nine is the comprehensive plan and rezone for Pactola Heights. Um, the applicant is Pactola Heights LLC with Ben Foslin as the signing member. Uh, this will affect 30.27 acres. Um, the current zoning is rural residential and the existing land use is residential or vacant. Um, only one of these lots is residential, the rest are vacant. Um, and their access is from Chaparral Drive and Chapel Court via Highway 385. There is no flood hazards on these properties. Um, the So as previously mentioned, Pectrola Heights was subdivided in 1979. At the time that it was subdivided, rural residential, um, or what we call rural residential now, had a 25-foot setback all around and a uh, one mile or one acre minimum. Um, the there are topographical concerns um, on these lots with that 25-foot setback. Um, and the road is currently being approved to Ordinance 14 standards, but currently does not meet Ordinance 14 standards. A building permit cannot be issued if the road is not approved across a given property. Um, and along with this rezone and comp plan, the applicant has now also submitted a layout plan um, and those um, 
the new lot configuration was included in the packets. And with that layout plan, they can also post surety for to improve that road. Um, another item that needs to be addressed is although low density residential can be brought down to half of an acre, um, the state of South Dakota on-site wastewater septic rules state that uh, on any given lot, um, you cannot have a well and septic on the same lot that is under one acre. So um, staff recommends denial of this rezoning comp plan because of the road improvements not having been completed. Um, and for discussion. Questions for Megan. What are the size of the lots? They range from one to 1.5 acres. Okay. Chair, Chairman, so basically you denied them because the road is not improved for low density residential? Yes. Um, the portion that they do have improved, which is up to um, a bit of a ways past that well lot that's listed on there, um, is it is. It does meet Ordinance 14 standards. It's the 24-foot wide gravel road. Um, so they are improving it. It is not complete yet. So it's just because that's not completed and the comprehensive plan, most of that area is, if I'm correct, rural residential around that area? Yep, there's, um, there's a lot of rural residential. Um, but there's also a fair amount of suburban residential uh, in the comprehensive plan, there's a handful of ranchette in the area, too. So bottom line, if we um, deny without prejudice, they can come back, improve the road, and then come back for a different comp plan based on low density? Um, on low density, they can. Um, Yes, if you uh, deny this without prejudice, they can come back in once the road is fully uh, improved and they can come back in. And um, I, that's the only thing that my recommendation for denial is off of, is the road. So if they come back in with the road having been improved, I would recommend approval. So if they went for a variance ahead of time from the commission, they could do that and then come back based on the road or not? Um, they could get a subdivision regulation variance, but it's not in their benefit. I don't believe that's something that we would approve or even take in because this road is needed to access multiple of these okay. lots. I thought I'd ask before um, they ask or somebody else asks that, but yeah. Megan, that's not what I want to do today. I'll just tell you. Just um, we've had options like that before, but based on this amount of lots and what they're doing here, I totally understand about the road. Yeah. Thank you. Jason Dennis, I'm Assistant Planning Director. So I can add to that. Like Megan said, um, through the layout plan process, uh, platting, they'll also have the option to post surety versus finishing the road. So at that point, once the surety is posted, they can come back and- That is true, Jason. Forward. I forgot about the surety. Thank you, Jason. Is there a means at our disposal to approve this today with a condition that the road gets approved so it, it Rezone, doesn't have to continue to come back. Rezone and comprehensive plan amendments can't be um, Those, conditioned, yeah. but they do have the variance going through the Board of Commissioners for that well lot, and if that variance isn't approved, then the uh, comprehensive, the variance can be conditioned is what I'm saying. Um, but that is through the Board of Commissioners, not through the Planning Commission. Could Mr. Chair, approved? Yes. Cool. I have a problem with the lot size yeah. because once we approve that, I don't care if there are covenants or not. We know um, we kind of ignore covenants. If we approve it for half acre lot size, that's what it is. <laughs> Karen, can I ask you, let's, let's uh, any more questions for Megan because I see the applicants here and I do have a question for the applicant and I think you do. Um, and I also have wanted to note to you, it, it's something that you need on this road thing before we let the African, who wants to speak anyway. Um, you can't imagine what some of the approaches are gonna look like when you meet 
uh, 14 standards and on a, on a small lot. These approaches are going to have some serious uh, amount of driveway with, with culverts underneath them. I mean, because of the drainage requirements of 14. <laughs> Uh, it's a it's a different ball game. It's, it's going to have a strange look. I'm not sure with small lots what it's going to look like with that sort of road going in. It, it, it may be something you want to look at too. Whether you know 14, we don't have anything in between. <coughs> I guess we either develop it to uh, what what our normal requirements are without going to 14. But and that's just basically a building requirement, isn't it? for driveway approaches on all these lots? Um, that is the ordinance 14 requirement. It's under highway. Um, just for clarification on the zoning, I know there's concerns about the lot sizes, but if anyone has been up there and looked at the topography up there, it'd be pretty difficult to get smaller lot sizes than an acre and get buildable area and meet setbacks. Um, part of the reason for the request for this um, zoning district as they do um, allow for eight foot side yard setbacks. Um, this topography is pretty challenging up there. Um, so staff felt instead of going through the Board of Adjustment and having a bunch of variances for setbacks because of the topography, that it would have been better for them to go with the low density residential zoning to allow for the eight foot setback so they weren't coming in and asking for variances um, for setbacks. So just keep that in mind when um, considering this. It wasn't necessarily for the lot size. I don't think that half acre lot sizes would be conducive of the topography up there at all to even get those kind of lot sizes in there to get any kind of buildable area, so. But I guess I'd like to point out, we do have a lot of developments with challenging uh, lot configurations. I live in an area that's full of them, uh, but they went with bigger lots to cover those. Uh, this was approved when it was a one acre situation. My biggest question is the wells and the, yeah. the septic. So and that's why I'd like to get to the applicant. The applicant also had a comment wanted to talk about the roads too. So if yep. we could do that, are you? I have one last comment. Sure. Um, they have submitted a layout plan to, um, to combine multiple of these lots. They're taking um, pretty much threes. Like I said, it's included in the packet. They're taking um, three lots at a time and they're combining them into one though so they're essentially turning 22 lots into seven or somewhere around there I would have to see the um, layout plan so they yeah, do I have think plans. there was originally 27 and there's 31 acres does that sound right yes 30 acres 30 but, yeah so they are combining a couple of those lots into a greater acreage okay thank you Please introduce yourself just for the record and you go ahead and address your concerns as you see fit. What's that? I see you can address your concerns from our comments as you see fit. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Lyndon Bolt, I work with Ben Foslin on the Pactola deal here. So thank you, Brittany, for pointing that out. The only lots that are going to be one acres are going to be, oh, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's about six of them right on the front of 385 right there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the rest of those are all being planned to be put into three acre lots. So we're trying to take a highly densely area that was done in 1978 and we're trying to move that density to better fit the Black Hills, okay? And better fit the amount of wells and septics on the area. So we're trying to benefit the planning and zoning department by not cramming 37 lots in here, 31. So. We are trying to do that to benefit the planning department and the Black Hills. So um, all of the road work has been done except the part, well, how do I say this? From the cul-de-sac there going up and uh, we have that under contract. Um, the contract is signed and the dirt moving people that we've hired, Larson Excavating, are planning on starting that work this week. And we've got a D8 and an excavator headed that way this week to start working on that stuff. So um, it is under contract, equipment is being moved, and we are in the process of starting that road and getting it substantially finished by your December 6th meeting. So. <clears throat> I've got a question. If you're going to those larger lots, you're still going to have problems with setbacks? Um, can I respond? Go ahead. Sure. 
But you have to introduce yourself for the record, please. Ben Fosland. Um, Brittany's recommendation was just to do low debt. We were initially going to do keep the larger three acre lots as rural residential because we don't care about the eight foot side setbacks on those. But her recommendation for simplicity was just the one zoning for the whole development. But you're right. It's not going to be a problem on the three acre lots. Right. It's more just for the smaller ones that will remain. Yeah. For simplification of the development and to accommodate those uh, those handful of one acre lots that will remain. <clears throat> Plus you already I'm certain their recommendation was based upon they already have something in place that's been approved and you don't have to go through the tribunals again to get something gone. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So um yeah that was we were we had initially thought well maybe it makes sense to leave some of them rural residential and but that just was more didn't make sense so we just went up there but yeah you're absolutely right the setbacks aren't going to be an issue at all on the three acre lots three plus acre lots then can i go to my second question septics and water yep i think all the commission's waiting to hear on that Yep. When don't sit down, both of you stay up here, and, yeah. and that way we can address yeah. <laughs> questions. The, Go uh, ahead. Money. The wells have been drilled, and a majority of these three acre lots. Um, the one well we drilled was 160 feet deep, 25 gallons a minute. The okay. next one we did was like 370, and it was 16 gallons a minute. And the other two we did were around that 160, 180 feet at like 18 gallons a minute. So we have ample water for our people, and we are making them share wells. Okay, that's what, how are you going to make sure that then people have an access to the smaller lots, I guess, that may not have the area mm -hmm. or the ability on a small lot to put that deeper well? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Because how do you plan to do that? Us as the developers, we're responsible for putting in the wells. So then you'll have like a water sharing agreement or something yeah, on that. It'll be a shared well agreement because, you know, with that amount of water, there's absolutely no reason to put a well in on every oh. one of these three acre lots. All we're doing is punching a bunch of holes in the aquifer. It's pointless. Okay. And so that's why we did the shared well agreement deal. And I have Alexander Drilling do all my drilling for me. And I know from the well that's on the property right now what kind of water we were going to hit. And that's why I knew that we could do shared well agreements so that we're not punching a bunch of holes in the aquifer and we're making people share water. We've also put in our covenants that we're going to make them put in a cistern so that they basically trickle fill all the time so that we're not killing the water supply. And you're not subject to the seasonal changes in the well depth. We all know in the Black Hills that we have wet that years happens. and we have dry years and we have good water up there. Um, but some of those wells at 160 feet, that's pretty shallow. Yeah. So that's why so you're going to store some of it. Mm -hmm. That's why we're going to make them put in a all cistern right. so that they always have water and they're not just hammering those wells all the time. You know uh -huh. what I mean? Because it burns up well pumps and it's hard on the aquifer. So and that was recommended to me from the Alexander drilling guys. All right. So. Questions for the applicants on water. I have one. So if you, is there a problem with you guys just posting surety so they can um, basically move forward on this? If, if that's what you recommend, ma'am, absolutely. <clears throat> Jason, can you explain that to me one more time or to the board if they post surety on the road? Sure. So that's a kind of a separate process. They just entered into the layout plan process at this point. So it's an internal review by staff. Okay. Um, once that's done, then they can move on to the preliminary plat or plan, and that's when they would actually post the surety and start moving forward towards the final step. So we're a little ways off from that at this point. Uh, I don't know if it would be necessarily appropriate to approve this today, um, more or less conditionally, okay, to so, post that surety. So, Jason, how do we move forward with if we decide to approve this today? Um, because it sounds like Megan said because of the road, but we could pay, they could post the surety because of the road later. Where, where am I missing something, Jason? Uh, I'm thinking probably at this point, this, is, this might be a little premature to rezone it right now. 
with the layout plan yeah. and just hitting our desks. So maybe a deny without prejudice would be the appropriate way so that once that that surety is posted, they can come right back in and ask for the same thing. Can we just not continue it? And maybe these guys understand that now if we continue it in two weeks, they post the surety and then we'd move forward? Well, the layout plan process, I'm not sure when we took that in, um, but it is a 30-day process for us to get that feedback back to them. Okay. Um, and then the preliminary plan comes forward after that, and that is heard by the Planning Commission and the board. So, so Ben, and tell me your first name again. Lyndon. Lyndon. Yep. Um, so what I'm listening to is basically um, to post it or continue it or continue without or deny without prejudice for 30 days so they can move forward on your your plan. So they don't want to yeah. uh, deny it. They want to move forward so they know all the plans yeah. ahead of time. And it's not just been our planning department. It's been our highway department also that has asked the questions yeah. to make sure they know all the information. So it's not denied today. We can yeah. either deny without prejudice or continue for at least 30 days. Am I correct, Jason? I think the deny without prejudice will leave some flexibility in there to find out when the preliminary plan is actually going to be on the agenda. Okay. So, so Jason, if I could have you stay here for a minute. Sure. So, like I said, ben, equipment's being... Lyndon, come up to the mic so first. Thank since you, Since the equipment has moved in and we're getting started pushing dirt this <coughs> week, um, just so I have a date and whatnot, so you said we could post a surety like a bond that this would be done right um give me some dates uh, like, i can work with you after the meeting and okay, give you some dates, okay. but as of you know standing because that's what my whole point was with getting this guy up there last friday getting our equipment moved in there and kind of getting him pushed forward to get this done is i was hoping that we would have this road done right. before uh the final approval in 30 days Sure. Does that make any sense to you? Yeah, it makes of, sense. Of so, where I'm trying to, what I'm trying to do. Yes. I'm trying to get the cart before the horse to prove to you guys we're going to get this done. Lyndon, some of it's on publishing dates, too, that are state requirements. In other words, we have to publish things as we move along in some of these that the public has a right to know what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And some of it's based on that, yeah. too. So, so I think what I'm understanding is that you're going to finish the roads, and then you want to come back in two weeks. Is that... You know, your timeline, like as fast as you can get the roads done, because that's our only hang up in the denial yeah. at this point. So, yeah. So is it okay if he works on the road, Jason, without, because sure. it's not a building permit, right? Because right? it sounds like posting surety is not really an option because you're planning to have the roads done. We right? can do whatever's best for the commission to get this moving forward. Excuse me. They, they actually could operate under the old one without posting a surety and finish the road, couldn't they? What was already approved for the original planning? Stay up here, Jason. I just don't want to post a surety for it when we can just go yeah. get the road done. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you guys are in charge. You can tell me what we need to do, and that's what okay. we'll do. Okay, Lyndon, you know? hold on so. just a second. Okay. So the only authority we have under our ordinance to require surety is under the planning process. So not under the zoning process, but the planning process. So in order for us to require surety, it has to be done as a condition of the plan. So what that's they're trying to say, Lyndon allows. and Ben, is they need the plat. And it wouldn't just be them, it'd be the highway. In order to know what size road, in order to know if they need a variance, in order to know a lot of things about what's happening. They're not trying to hold you up in a yeah. sense, but that plat's going to make a huge difference of what can be approved and not approved. So that's why I said it'd be easier, that's my opinion, I'm only one, deny without prejudice instead of move forward on something that um, you don't, do not, don't want denied later, and maybe that's my opinion again. So... Um, I always like to do it right and deny without prejudice. You wouldn't lose any money or anything with that. They would just work with you and your planning department um, has done this not just for you but for other people and it seems to simplify the process, not only now, but moving forward um, until you're finished. Gotcha. Make sense? Yes. Okay. Yes. And on that topic, before you go though, I still, would you address what you plan to do with the septic and the so that we'd know in advance, I guess. Septics are going to be individual lot owners? Yes. The the septic is the whoever buys these lots, that would be their responsibility. Okay. We're doing the roads and the power is all in, and then we're doing the wells. But I don't normally do septic work for people because I don't know where they're planning on putting their house on the property. So we basically sell them shovel-ready road, water, power. Okay. And the septic is whoever buys these, it's their responsibility. So. And those, the septics would be based on the new requirements of the layout that you're going to do? Yes. Okay. Yeah. 
Any other questions on septic? Go ahead, Mike. Lots against 385. Those are the single lots, the small yes. lots. Yes, yes. And, and how many wells are on that, or how are they sharing the wells on those things? So this end down here where the cul-de-sac is? Yeah. Um, there's two wells on there right there that service those three lots. And then there'll be... Uh, There'll be three other lots on the upper part um, that would service the three acre lot in the end next to the trailer court, and then the other four single acre or one acre lots. Let me just simplify that a bit. Yeah. The it will be one well for every two residences. Yeah. That's um, how it is. Okay. Is how Thank you. That makes it more simple. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, my only concern at this point are the are the, uh, the septic tanks on the small lots, but. I guess that's about all we can do. Sure, but it's still their right to do that and yeah. put them in there. Yep. That's all I've got. Thank you. Any other questions for our applicants? Yeah. yeah. And the smaller lots still are acre plus, right? Acre, yeah. acre plus. Yeah. So Correct. they still meet all the state sure. guidelines on there. So it looks like you're in the new plant looking at turning about 21 lots into seven lots. Correct. So, um, is there a way to approve this? And then still everything be held up on um, building permits, you know, if the road's not done. Um, yes, the road needs to be in place because we need um, we need permission from the future road district or the highway department in order to issue a building permit. Um, and uh, theoretically, those entities wouldn't issue an approach permit until there is a Ordinance 14 road in place. So if we did approve it today, everything is really going to be on hold until they get that road done anyway. Yes, and they're also going through the planning process, which would also put the majority of these lots on hold. Thank you, Kevin. But we'd have, to, as I see it, we have to approve it from what's been submitted and published. Well, so we'd have to give them. Hasn't it already been submitted? This the layout plan. Yes. So the layout has already been done. This is the next item that you can see where the twenty-one lots are turned into three lots. So that's already been done, to my understanding. It's correct, but we're looking at a comprehensive amendment down to the the small lot of sixty-five hundred feet, and we're looking at a rezone based on that too. And that I would oppose. I'm not sure why, but because you know, it looks like an option. Because we don't have anything in front of us that says they're not going to be 6,500 feet. It says oh, right here they are. Yeah. This is what's been published. This is what's been submitted. In other words, I take them at their word, but I don't have anything to look at. Well, on the layout, we've already got the layout, right? So I've received the layout um, as of last Monday. I'm currently working on it. I'm going to try to get them back that back to them as soon as possible so that if they need to, they can post that surety with the preliminary plan. But um, with that, I can't give an exact date of when I'll be done. I have 30 days. I don't plan on taking those 30 days. This is not the correct one for the future. This is the future one right here, isn't it? Uh -huh. with, the, with the highlight? <coughs> yes. Yeah, this is the That's future. It. This okay. is already, mm -hmm. they've already said what, what it's going to be there. They've submitted what's going to be if you turn to the next item number, whatever we're on. And number nine, that shows you what <coughs> they're submitting for their layout. So what's Charlie's? Uh, um, Mr. Chair, what what part of that doesn't work? The part where we're changing the zoning, we're gonna we're discussing them together. We're asking for what we're reviewing and what was published has to do with changing a comprehensive amendment to um, low density residential from what it is. And we're asking to change that same zoning. We're not, we're not approving that per se. What you're talking about that they want to do and what we're approving 
is something different than those two items. We don't need to change the zoning for that. Chair. Yes. I thought this Bottom was... line is um, they're not, the staff isn't shutting them down. They're saying they need more time and that they, um, on this road anyway, is not going to come forward and get that done in 30 days anyway. So you're not delaying anybody in a sense by denying without prejudice. You're just giving the staff more time to figure out what's really going on on the property. So um, they're not doing anything wrong. The staff is just trying to review to make sure everything is right. So um, delaying them is what you're going to do for 30 days. But in a sense, they're going to take 30 days anyway because they have to advertise and do all the things that they need to do. And by the time they come back, um, I don't think um, at this point that it's not going to be all done and easier to explain instead of doing pieces and parts. That's just my opinion. And I did want to throw in, we have looked at other ones where this particular zoning, uh, low, res, uh, low density residential, we looked at lots that were bigger and people said, oh no, we'll never take them down to 6,500 people. Well, 6,500 feet. We have the future and we have the planning layout to support <coughs> approving things on a by golly and by guess is is not the way to do it. These folks aren't going to do that. I agree. They've already showed their cards. But <coughs> what about an individual property owner on this place after that? They've got 6,500 feet to work with. Because <coughs> we changed it. Charlie? Yeah. Low density residential is half acre, not the 6,500. Oh, yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> but then there are some then they can break down to a half acre okay. if we change it. It's true. They would have to go through the platting process in order to do that. <coughs> um, but we've had that. We've seen that. And then that's where push comes to shove. We're sitting here listening to people want to divide their property. They purposely put their house in some particular spot on it so that they can subdivide it. So we're telling them, go ahead and subdivide now. We're not helping developers. We're not doing anything. We're not even firing what they asked us to do by giving them that. So I say give them what they want, but don't switch to something that, that isn't going to work. For what reason? <coughs> In other words, I'll start where I, or go back to where I started. I don't support the half acre. On the, uh, yeah, and then, on the seven lots along 385, do you require an eight-foot setback on those, or is that a 25-foot setback? That's a 25-foot setback right now. With rural residential, which this entire area is zoned as, we <coughs> all have that 25-foot setback currently. But so was that not the purpose of asking for the rezone, was to limit the setback from 25 to 8? Yes. So Charlie's argument makes sense that there's no reason to... Look at a rezone if you don't need an eight foot setback anymore. Sorry, can I comment? So we do need an eight foot setback on the one acre lots. That was the whole point of asking for the low density residential. Yeah, that was my first question and I heard that 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 you would still do 25 foot setbacks on those one acre lots. No. Which is why I asked the question. Sorry, so. I misunderstood you. I thought you were saying wasn't the <coughs> point of this for the, to accommodate the eight foot setbacks is what I thought I heard. So I misunderstood you there. But yes, the whole point was to allow, because of the way those the topography, having a 25 foot uh, side setback on those one acre lots is makes it really difficult to find a building site. So that. Uh, the eight foot makes it a lot more feasible on those one plus acre lots, and that's that's the whole purpose of the of the low density designation for us. Anyway. So, if the rezone was not approved, each of those lots would have to come back for a variance for the setback. Is that correct? Yeah. If they had a building site, um, 
that was suitable and they could build there, they wouldn't need the variance. But with, I have been out there and there are a lot of tough graphical concerns. Um, and um, I'm not a builder. I couldn't tell you exactly which area, which lots have buildable area, but the lots that don't have a buildable area that's outside of those setbacks um, would need that variance. So theoretically, they each of them could need a variance. So the combined lots that make up the three plus <laughs> acres, you could easily get your setbacks, but the one acre lots, mm. there could be concern, and I count seven of them um, off the, the plan. So that could be seven variances or five or uh, yes. depending on how how the houses could lay out on those. Because uh, if we rezone all of them, then those three acre lots, as Charlie says, they could all. They down. have the benefit of the reduced setbacks as well. Yeah. And it's not necessary. I don't know. I just, I'm just not in favor of the half acre. And, and neither are we, sir. We have yeah. no intentions of, sure. of of doing that. I mean, if I would have bought this property undeveloped, yeah. there wouldn't be a single one acre lot. I agree with you 100%. <clears throat> and that's why we have no intentions of subdividing these to a half acre. None. Zero. Zilch. And I would strongly suggest that if anybody buys these and they come in here and try and rezone them, that you shut them down. Because, I mean, one acre lot in the Black Hills, I, I believe that's borderline too small Lyndon. so i agree with you but sir. if we deny without prejudice and you come back with the new layout and that's properly published that's what we're voting on and that's what we're passing I understand. what i'm saying is right now if we do this i don't think we're i agree with you and i accept that you're saying you're not doing that mm -hmm. but i i can see where you're looking for reduced setback on some yeah on some yeah, the, the ones that have the topography problems are the ones that we don't have the road right. built on. The ones in the lower three in the cul-de-sac here, they're flat, easy to build on, no problem yeah. at all. I mean, driveway is literally going to be right off the road, right into your house. They're perfect. Those three lower ones, it's the upper three or upper four that have some photography stuff where they're going to need the eight-foot setbacks in order to make that work. Lynn, and we even have some in the hills that are agriculture and they have difficulties with the setbacks you're talking about yeah. where they actually ended up digging in back in the rock and they've got a foundation under a building that they wanted to build on flat ground so i i understand what you're saying but i'm not necessarily softening up about it i understand the, the, that one acre is the one acre, whatever it comes out to and you can build on one acre people build on solid rock oh yeah yeah so what we're proposing or looking at today is not what you guys are going to do so i don't say i think it should be denied so chairman i'm gonna go somewhere else <laughs> <laughs> okay so another thing is a declaration of covenants restriction and email to run with the land uh, megan or megan alexa could you um tell them about um what covenants mean and do we specifically follow the covenants and uh, make our rules and regs based on that covenant. Sure, Alexa Moeller, Pennington County State's Attorney's Office. When it comes to covenants, uh, this body nor the Board of Commissioners can enforce um, those private, essentially, contracts um, between a homeowners association and its members. Um, and we don't, we as in this body and the Board of Commissioners don't make their decisions planning wise on any sort of covenants <coughs> as we can enforce those. Thank you, Miss Megan. You bet. Just so you guys know that before you go up and then you have covenants and you're using covenants, um, people get stuck on that a little bit and uh, we don't follow by covenants. I mean, okay. it's nice to say, some people say we don't have any VHRs in there and that makes a difference on for some people, but bottom line is um, what you do in your covenants is up to you. Uh, we do not follow covenants. I understand. I think I see the point that you're making is that you're saying what's to stop somebody from coming back and subdividing a lot to the low density residential and correct as long as they go through the process. I see that point. Um, 
because we really don't need the eight foot setbacks on all of the three plus acre lots that we're basically combining the rest of these into. It's just, it's just those, is it seven or eight on the front there? So from that perspective, you know, does it make more sense just to have them the apply for a variance with their building permit on those seven? Maybe that, because we can roll with the rural residential on all the three acre lots. Yeah. The 25 set foot setbacks are fine. Yeah. I think we want to ham and egg with you guys to make sure the, that you're happy with what we're doing and yeah. it, it sits well with you because yeah. I, I can totally I, understand, no, your, I understand where you're coming from. Somebody point. comes in here and tries to hack these into half yeah. acre lots, no, you're going to have a mess on your hands up there. I get that. I don't, and you would know better than I, if they can do that, you know, um, because of the zone, I think the zoning change was was recommended as a simplification. But if if that doesn't work, and the to have them apply for variances is better. Maybe that's Let's see what Megan wants to say. With the platting process, um, there are parcels being affected by it that are that one acre and that would cause them to lose their legal non-conforming or grandfathered status um yeah sorry okay sorry this is really confusing because at the time that these were rezoned to low density residential in the 70s they allowed one acre minimums for this zoning district. With the platting and reconfiguring, they lose all of that, so they would have to have mixed zoning in the subdivision. That's the concern. So in order for those to maintain those one acre lot sizes, they would have to rezone some of them to one and some of them to the other. Hmm. Does that make sense? Because of when they were rezoned and the time the subdivision was created, it was under a different zoning ordinance and different requirements. So that's where it gets confusing and convoluted. Does that make sense a little bit? By them reconfiguring all of the lot lines and changing it, they'll lose their legal non-conforming status for their, that zoning district because that zoning district at the time it was zoned and planted had different requirements. Now when they go in and they reconfigure things, they have to fall under the new ordinances. So, I guess my only question is when they go in and reconfigure, if they, they stayed on their their plan that they need the eight foot in a specific space. Why? And they go through that process individually. Now, if they want to stay out of that and let the, the buyer do it, that's, that's on an individual owner member basis, whatever you call it. Right. But with the new plat, they couldn't file the plat until they rezone some of the lots that are under the requirement. So the, the one acre lot sizes wouldn't meet the new requirements for rural residential. So they would either have to rezone those or get lot size variances before they could even file the plant. But if they go up, run with what they have now, can't they make certain lots bigger and leave the other ones the same? Right, but they still would, because they're reconfiguring this subdivision, this plant, they're going to lose their legal non-conforming status for the zoning district that was at the time. Just for the lots that they're going to replant? All of them, yes. All of them. Point. Yes. Yeah. So that's why we, we suggested this because they have some mixed sizes in here and having the subdivision have some of them be this zoning district, some of them be this zoning district. Um, that's why it was this. Okay. And in all honesty, um, staff has been working on some comprehensive plan amendments to change low density residential up to a one acre minimum lot size instead of the half acre minimum lot sizes because we don't feel it's conducive of some of the subdivision requirements for it. So just uh, it also doesn't meet the septic requirement, right? Correct. Right. Exactly. So the half acre is, and that's something that we've been working on with some of the other districts that are working with that. So that is a, an ordinance amendment that, and a comprehensive plan amendment that's coming. Yeah. So. And so in the future, if somebody wanted to replat that one acre lot into two half acres. They wouldn't be able they to. They wouldn't if be we, able to because they couldn't have septic unless they had a community 
sewer system. Right, or if we do the comprehensive plan amendment and the zoning change for low density to be a one acre minimum, they couldn't go down to a half acre anyway. The one acre would be the minimum. Um, just with all of the conversations from this board and the board of commissioners with this low density, that half acre seems to be a real item of contention. So um, we've discussed moving it up to that one acre just because of the septic requirements. So that's a that's a good good point. I appreciate you bringing that up. And I remember when I looked at this, um, I talked to the the county, and they said you have to have a minimum of one acre to have a septic. So if somebody did try and go in there and yeah, cut them into good. halves, they wouldn't be able to put a septic on it, so they can't do it. That's a good point. So that's a good point. That kind of kiboshes your uneasiness, sir, of them having a half acre lot. So, yeah, that's a good point too. Yeah. But the three acre ones can do the same that you're going to lay out. Yeah. Because you did up front. They can do it. Mm -hmm. I'm but saying those other ones, the, the ones that are three acres, they can still subdivide. <coughs> yep. If we do this. That's, again, that's opening that door where we see those things. And, and there's such an inconsistency. I've sat on this board in a number of years, and I've seen some of them pass, and some of them that I wouldn't pass with a 10-foot pole, and they passed. Yeah. They, and, and I completely understand where you're coming from, and... I hope you see where we're coming from. We bought a piece of property that's chopped into one acre lots in 1978. Neither one of us were even alive during that time. And we're trying to take a densely populated development and we're trying to. Lyndon, here's where we really get in a mess. Yeah, but I get. I'm not going to, what would I say? I'm not going to turn around and, and try to profile people. But we see out of state addresses with these requests coming in here and and they bought a particular piece of property that never planned to sublet or what. As soon as they got it and it was all handled, there was a submission to sublet the thing. I understand changed. where you're coming from. And we've seen that. And that bothers me because you folks live here. Yep. And these are, we're talking about people that read in a book or meritocracy. That's how you get ahead. Well, we don't operate that way out here. I and all of a sudden, we, we owe that to them because they have the right to do it. And I don't want to set up some rights that you turn around and you've got to accept a buyer from out of state. Mm -hmm. I mean, if their money is just as good as anybody here. In fact, it turns over four more times than our money here. So their out-of-state money is probably better money. But they still don't understand what the handshake system we operate on out here I, so i don't want to leave that agree. handshake out there that's where i, I why agree I'm where you're coming from, from. yep I, and i love out-of-state money but i'm very very picky on which out-of-state money i take let me just so. make a comment um <laughs> mr chair i wasn't thinking about the three acre parcels i was concerned about the just one. thinking about the one acre parcels which i knew couldn't be split down in half anyway but now you've raised a good point those three acre parcels can still be somebody can buy one of those and subdivide it they uh -huh. can i just make can, a, you go ahead and then i have two up here go ahead you go no you go right ahead i was just going to say Thanks, um man. to the point that's been made which is a good one the you could you couldn't get a put a septic on a half acre lot right no can't get a permit acre. so the risk of subdividing to a half acre what is moot what would be the it's moot thank you so the risk would be bigger lots that they sub subdivide the three acre lots into one plus acre lots oh, yeah. so from that Sorry. perspective because he already started thinking about this big picture if the county saying hey we're moving that the half acre risk is moot because they can't get a septic on half acre so the the risk would be that they now to do that they would have to amend the covenants okay now you don't enforce covenants i get that but thinking about it pragmatically the yeah. covenant state you cannot sub now i understand you have to operate i understand that i'm just saying pragmatically <coughs> they would have to because they're so get involved. attorneys involved they would have to try to amend the covenants with a 51% vote of the fellow homeowners up, you know, so I'm just, I, under, I think if the risk is subdividing to one acre lots, to me, that doesn't seem like 
as big of a concern as would be if they could do the hat. So that's the point I was trying to make. Okay, Mike and then Kevin B. Well, I guess at this point, I'm assuming what you're thinking, Charlie, is to leave it rural residential and then these that are against 385, you come in with variances if needed. Going to have to clean it up. Out of the six or seven we're dealing with, what if everybody uh, that buys those, only three of them decides that they need a setback change? Then at least we've cleaned up what we've done here. But I think we've got to stay with what we get published here, and I'm not in favor of changing what we have here. I'm, I'm in support of what the staff is proposing, which is going to take put some extra days on it. I know that. Unfortunately, go ahead, Kevin. So, what what I would be in favor of is the three acre lots that have been combined, that they get pulled out of this um, comprehensive plan amendment and the rezone, and we only apply that to the seven lots that are the one acre lots. That's where you need your um, eight foot. They get replatted. They get rezoned so that those seven acres are rezoned. The other lots all meet its current zoning or, uh, organization. Um, so they all meet what they're zoned at now in the three acre configuration. But those seven lots need to be re, um, amended and rezoned to this half acre minimum. I don't have a problem with the half acre because I know you can't get septics on them and um, you can get your setbacks, that kind of stuff. So. To me, I, I would be happy rezoning those seven lots, but not the, the three acre ones because they're already zoned correctly. Um, so we would have two zonings. You'd be okay with two separate, two, uh, two zonings in the development? To me, it's fine yeah. because, because then it protects you from having to do legal stuff with your covenant on those three acre lots. It's not zoned ad adequately. So if it's down to a half acre already, now you've got a legal battle if somebody decides they want to change their their lot. Because um, then they have to go through a plan amendment, a, a rezone, and all of that, and then fight the covenant. Right. So what you're saying is all these ones that we want to change to three acre lots, if we leave that a different zoning, if we change those to threes, because me and Ben... I mean, we may end up with a few of these lots. We may build a house up there someday. So you're saying if we change those to threes and rezone them, they can't ever be split back up. Let me because that's yeah. He's that, saying leave leave the zoning yeah on the threes on the rural threes. residential because it has a three acre minimum. Yeah. So and then people it, can't come back in and oh, double back do on this. what we're trying to do and split them back up. Yes. Yeah. So bring I agree. Those, let's let's br yeah. bring those grandfathered lots into the current zoning. Yeah. As your as your planning, as your <laughs> layout plan suggests. Yes. Is that you're taking those three lots that were grandfathered at one acre, and you're bringing those into a three acre so that conforms with today's today. zoning correctly. Mm -hmm. Those seven acre lots are the ones that you have a problem with. Those you could rezone to the low density presidential. Chair. And I got to interrupt you because I don't think we can do what you're talking about. Chair, Kevin. the main you, thing here is I think even if Kevin's not wrong, right. what I'm saying is deny without prejudice. Mm -hmm. And now that we've had the discussion, reconfigure it. that was my point is work with your staff, get these guys where they need to be, bring them back. They're going to be delayed with some of their work anyway. Um, Kevin's not wrong on some of their stuff to try to help him. So um, bottom line is I would suggest that we make the motion of deny without prejudice and let them visit with the staff that know all the rules and regs and what they can do for Is solutions. there a second so that we can discuss? Second. All right. Okay. And I agree with you. Plus, planning and the planning commission, the commissioners, we have a procedure and it's published and we let the public know what we're doing so that if people take disagreement with us, whether they live out there or not, it's their right to. If they live in the county, Absolutely. there's people can come from other counties and disagree with us. We don't care. So I agree. What we've got here doesn't blend itself to the changes that we'd like to see fit and you'd like to see fit so they work. So I agree with what you're proposing. Go ahead, Chair. Brittany, does that is that going to work? What we're talking about here? 
or is that going to change now because of that grandfathered in? You mean keeping some of them three acres and some of them one acre? Or having two different zoning districts? Um, it doesn't. I mean, it's allowable. The only issue is, is even if you do that, the people with the three acre lot sizes, if they wanted to subdivide it, they could come in and say, well, the person across the street has that zoning. The infrastructure is there for that zoning. And that still could get zoned down to that and they could still subdivide it. So it really, I mean, it, it would make them, it, they would have to go through the process, but it. Sure. So the bottom line is, guys, you might, if you did it, it seems like you'd pay, put them at three acres on the frontage or two acres or two and a half, whatever. And then if someone subdivided later to see if they could get it, if you wanted it passed, you would have done three acres or whatever up front. You wouldn't cut them down to half acres because that's where the issue is here is just that frontage. So um, bottom line, uh, just saying that if you wanted it to be less contentious, it would probably be easier if you did bigger lots up front. And then later on, if people wanted to subdivide, then they could come instead of you guys subdividing it into acre lots. Just a thought. Any other discussion? I want the applicant to know here for sure what we're proposing is a deny without prejudice per the recommendation of the planning department. That's so if you have anything to wade in right now before we do that, because you're you're the only public left to discuss, I was gonna ask for the public. I, I honestly, I don't, I don't know what to think. I mean, all I know is we're trying to take a densely populated area and make it less populated. <laughs> so I hope that you can respect that. And uh, yes. um, my last question is, is while we're in this time of reconfiguring and whatnot, would it be beneficial to me and my people and my equipment to go in there and start building that road? Or would you like me to hold off on that? No, do it. I'll build a road. Just, uh, it would be beneficial for you because you need to have that completed for the plan. Yeah. That's my that's my only question. I appreciate your time. That's thank what you. I was saying. You can still do it. Ben, well. go ahead. No, it. just thanks everybody. Yep. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Point of order. This motion is on. Just one at a time. We're talking if the motion's on agenda item number eight. eight. Yes. Thank you. For clarity. Any additional discussion? <laughs> From the public, from the commission, hearing none, all in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Now we're on to item number nine. Mr. Chair, move to approve rezone 23-16 per staff's recommendation to deny without prejudice. Second. Is there a second? Been moved and seconded to, uh, I didn't even flip through the page yet and put my glasses on. Got to get to it. Is this a deny or deny without prejudice? All right, it's it's to uh, per staff's recommendation to deny RZ twenty three dash one six. Discussion. All done. Megan. Megan. Staff's recommendation is to deny it without prejudice. Oh yes, yeah. excuse me, you're correct. <laughs> Boy, they're just, every meeting I just fall out of the chair, I think, once at least, don't I? All right, thank you. Very good. To deny without prejudice, we'll go through that again. The motion is to deny without prejudice, rezone RZ 23-16 per staff's recommendation. Discussion from the audience. From the commission. Hearing none, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. On to item number 10. <laughs> Good morning, Commission. Again, item number 10 is the County Board Report. Uh, the Board of Commissioners concurred with the Planning Commission's recommendations from the November 13th, 2023 Planning Commission for Ordinance Amendment 08 23 01 to amend Section 319 for vacation home rentals. It was denied by the Board of Commissioners. I only got one question. What did, did any of the members of the what? The committee that you appointed to deny uh, on the rezone, uh, on the... Uh, BHR? Yeah. They weren't there. Um, we had one, um, one of our commissioners was um, abstained. And then uh, the discussion basically was, and, and that's what I was thinking, what <coughs> my opinion was, that we didn't have that many complaints on BHRs. 
that we needed to change the ordinance. And number two, if we were trying to um, bring people into compliance, <coughs> meaning the ones that weren't on BHRs into compliance, that making more rules and regulations, uh, in my past experience, wasn't going to bring more people in. We also didn't have the staff, staffing, in a sense, to uh, regulate those VHRs the way we were trying to regulate them through the uh, ordinance. Um, that wasn't just the um, commission that was staff members and others. And maybe if you, and that's why I said, maybe if you made the the fines higher or something, then it could have been more regulated, that kind of stuff. But right now, um, they don't have the staffing. So uh, for me, so <laughs> we did have proposals to increase fees. So those aren't getting improved by the commissioners either to help pay for staffing at this point. Um, Nothing. Wow. <laughs> Just out of curiosity. Go ahead. I, yes. I knew Jim you know, would say You something. make a great argument just to completely abolish this regulation. Because uh, Airbnb and those companies basically provide the kinds of protections that you need for consumers. Right. And they also insist on most of the amenities that are, are included in our own regulations. Right. So if we're, if we're not going to have a vigorous enforcement process and bring everyone into compliance, we'd be better off to simply abandon the whole thing and walk away from it and let Airbnb and those, those franchise organizations, for all practical purposes, manage it for us. Because they would do a pretty good job up to a point. Except maybe when there was an emergency, some kind of natural disaster, or a bad operator gets in there. Right. Sometimes they're slow on the draw. And it just depends on whether we feel the responsibility, which there is an expense, a significant one, but fees and regulatory fees should pay for that, I would think. But anyway, we have to make that choice. And that's, I'm not saying that, um, I mean, I spent a lot of time <laughs> over the years with this thing, and initially, I, I mean, I, I think I thought it fundamentally is a pretty good regulation and a good approach. But as it gets bigger, the cost increase, the demand for this kind of service now requires good, strong regulation, which costs money. People become irritated if the state or the county is frustrating them, as opposed to Airbnb says. No, you got to do this, this, and that. They smile and say, absolutely, and they do it. But we're in a kind of a rock and a hard place because we want that kind of regulation, but it doesn't, it doesn't go down as well uh, when it comes from government, you know. Well, Jim, and so I, I'm frustrated on the one hand by the denial. On the other hand, I also understand that maybe this is an albatross around our neck. Maybe it's a dinosaur that should be extinct. I don't know, but... I. Anyway, just some thoughts. It's much Mr. more complicated than that. Do, does the existing ordinance just stays in place then, right? Yeah. yeah. So we still have the majority of the <clears throat> issues yep. being addressed by the existing ordinance. That's where I wanted to weigh in. But As a, go ahead. I'm sorry. We lost the part where the planning department would right. be able to approve some of the vacation home rentals without yeah. bringing them to us. So. Versus the ones that operate without we live in a county that decided to have planning and zoning. There are counties right next to us that don't have planning and zoning. And I bring this up and I use it all the time. If you had a nice place and decided to develop it like these young fellows were talking about, and somebody decides, like me, that I am a, uh, a historical car buff, and I decide to start my own little junkyard next door <laughs> because I can buy these cars at the right place. Uh -huh. Well, planning and zoning takes care of that problem. When we don't have it, it isn't taken care of. In this particular case, we're falling on back on the fact that we do have planning and zoning. Because of planning and zoning, we've got to look at things from health, what our voters want out there. And you certainly have to take into consideration what your property owners that are voters that are paying taxes. And we have a particularly controversial 
issue in this. There's a divide. But what I want to throw in here is I've never seen any topic other than septic so addressed by the people that either support or oppose it. And they got involved in this for 20 years. I've been sitting and listening to. And somewhere along the line, unfortunately, I think the Board of Commissioners are going to have to get a real stiff backbone and say, we're going to have to raise some fees to properly operate this. And that's where it falls. I, I don't blame you for being adverse to raising property owners' fees. You have so little of the budget to work with in the first place that isn't already, um, what do they call that, categorized, categorized. You can't do anything about it. You have, what, 10, 11 percent of your budget, really, that you guys are kicking around? It's, it's somewhere around there, maybe 14 or 15. I don't know. But it's not much. And when you talk about fees, and I agree with Kieran, but you talk about those fees, that's a substantial out of that 14 or 10 to 15 percent. So, but somewhere we've got to do it if we're going to have planning and zoning. These property owners have a right to, do, to expect that somebody alongside of them is going to live within the rules of the system. <coughs> we have a whole group out there that have decided they're not going to. Rapid City has more of them than we do, according to the counts of the published numbers. So, Charlie, um, that's, that's the recommendation. Because of history, I've been in this nine years and listened to every different ordinance there is on it. And um, over-regulation doesn't bring people forward to do more. It makes them turn away from it, in my experience, from ordinances. So... Um, are you are you punishing the ones that are good, or are you trying to go after the ones that are bad, or do not that do not do it? So um, the goal was, as I was listening, was to bring more people into regulation because it wasn't going after the ones that already were there because they hadn't had many complaints. It was the ones that weren't in compliance. So wasn't against the fees, if you saw. wasn't against the fees that was going up. It was the over-regulation was not going to bring more people in for that goal. If you don't have that many and you have minimal, and I asked it maybe three times in those meetings, did we have a lot of complaints on vacation home rentals? It was minimal. So as a person that has to deal with ordinances and just like you guys and, and policy and procedure, then why would I change that because it's minimal? And why would I try to bring over regulation into something that the goal is to um, have people come into compliance and want to come in more compliance? So that's my point. We're, we're not a state that has a tendency to complain a lot. And I've always thought, <laughs> and I came, that's true about our neighbors. That's not, the, that's not the ball game out here. That may be the ball game in Cook County, Illinois, but that's not the ball game here. People don't complain. They take action. We have a lot of people looking the other way, and they only respond to dollars and cents. And, and an absurdity would be if you want to make throwing stuff out of your car a $3,000 fine and people can report you, I'll bet a lot of it stops. Because there's a certain segment of society is not going to respond to things until it's outside of the organization. And they've got to worry and, or they're going to pay a fine. So how much it. is too much for a fine? If I make, well, I don't know how much I make, $3,000 a time or um, every six weeks or every two weeks I pay 3000 Your $1,000 fine is not going to make people come into compliance. Deb, that came from the owners, uh, operators. That's where that fine came from. I'm so they against, think it's necessary. Well, Charlie, I'm Other not against Other operators it. that do. Well, I'm not against it, but listening to people that um, I have a motel, I have properties, um, that that wasn't going to make people come in compliance with the fine because it depends how much money they're making on those VHRs. So because you have a higher fine, does it make people come in uh, or maybe they're going to tell on them. But if you see in Rapid City, look at some of their areas that they're having issues. Again, 
bringing people into compliance, is it going to be because they're telling on each other? They've told on, if I'm correct, uh, Brittany or, or Jason, they've told on people for years and it still hasn't made the difference. So I guess, what are you saying? That we haven't done anything about it for years, have we? Yeah, actually we have. No, if we take them on an individual basis and if people don't report them, we don't do anything. Yeah. We can find out who's operating and who's not. Once we have some of these numbers, some of the things that were in that ordinance strongly supported an enforcement program that was easy to work with. Right. With not the people and to so support And so that's it. out the window, too. So not the people that could be able to support it, meaning do you have the staff members? I didn't just ask. This is a Deb's opinion. I ask many people, including your planning department. And they were hoping that some fines might help establish a staff member and we didn't have to have a staff member that was full-time there's part-time jobs available too i assume i think we've wasted enough time on this ordinance <laughs> i don't want to hear any more <laughs> hey. I, I think so there, there's certainly a division within the county i think it's a tough one for you guys to decide you've made your decision right so and there are. can be amendments and stuff based on changes and things that we see that need to be changed it's not dead like it's an ordinance guys that if there's changes that are going to make a difference if they're seeing things meeting your uh planning staff that i trust very very much on what they do if they see some of those things that they think would be very important because it was vetted um they can bring some of that back forward as well that would not be um meaning um, something they could do but something they could that made sense so I believe that um, in the legislative session this year, I've heard some rumors that there may be some stuff introduced into the yeah. short-term rental stuff. Of course, I hope the state gets out of it altogether. You know what I think of their 14 days. And it's nice to hear your opinion. You guys do matter. It doesn't mean it's oh. a, it, it's. I don't mind that people are against or for. Everybody has kind of a certain opinion on it. So I do appreciate what you think, whether you agree with us or not. So. The two things that I see that um, I miss from that ordinance would be the administrative function rather than a planning commission function mm -hmm. and the higher fee, penalty fee for people operating outside of the yeah. The thing. I think those two items would really help bring people into compliance when they're put in um, tandem with each other. Um, makes it easier for them to come in. They don't have to go before this body and go through a bunch of process and then higher fees when they do get caught when somebody does pull them out. Um, that hurts their pocketbook and that, that definitely makes it harder. Um, how that checklist works for an administrative process and uh, with the existing ordinance with just a higher fee um, that would be something to for the planning commission to look at and maybe resubmit before we make a motion to adjourn and i'm hoping that's the next thing <laughs> one of the things that commissioners and i have to say this as the chairman i'm going to say this Never before in the history of, of my time and affiliation of knowing about planning commission has the planning commission been so diligent that the folks came again and again and put a plan together. That's probably why you didn't have a lot of people sitting out jumping up and down in the audience because it was done here. And we voted against some of those that supported this or that. They might have supported something that was more regulation. They might have supported something that was less. Whatever. I'm saying it was done here. And so that was a different weighing process I'd like to see done this time versus other things go forward as an ordinance amendment. We've spent a lot of time, months and months, in fact, more than a year, right here in this commission discussing that. Did this, a lot of hours. Did that, those amendments come up because the, the planning commission decided that it should, or was it the commissioners? No, it asked? came down, the, the committee came, but they wanted us to be the ones that, that uh, what do you call, vetted them, you know, that the process went but through the here. The commissioners initiated the process. Or the commissioners it again? selected a committee, yes. <laughs> but that's all right. I mean, they do it. I don't think they're overpaid either, so. <laughs> so I'm on the other side of that. I move we adjourn. Second. Is there a second? <laughs> All in favor of the motion signify aye. by saying aye. Nope, we have two more items to discuss.
You have to just go down through the 11, 12, and 13. Oh, do we really? Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were waving your hand over there or something. All right. Items from the public. Our public is there. absent. No public. <laughs> items from the staff. I think no additional items. We've worn you out. From the membership, we certainly killed this one. Is there any other ones? <laughs> Okay. Now we're going to adjourn. Now the motion to adjourn has been made and seconded. All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. <laughs>